had to come to Iran. Why? Because there was something I didn't understand about Islam. And I knew part of the answer was here. What didn't I understand? I didn't understand why there's no prophecy in the Quran. Not even the researcher I hired could find one. ISIS certainly believes Prophet Muhammad predicted the rise of the caliphate they're prepared to die for. So where is this prophecy? Look at this. I saw it at MSNBC. 65,000 ISIS wives and children spread out in this one POW camp in Syria like wrecks on the seashore. But they're not wrecks. They're human beings like you and I. But they've been totally deceived. What I want to know is this. Where did Prophet Muhammad make this prophecy that led them here? It's not in the Quran. So where is it? For me, this curiosity about Islam started in 2007. I started digging, mostly online. But then in 2011, it led me to travel. First here to Islam's third most sacred site, the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Then in 2019, here to Iran, homeland of the most revered and beloved figure in all of Iranian history. Not Ayatollah Khomeini, mind you, whose massive shrine covering multiple acres we did visit. No, not him. Without a doubt, the most beloved figure in all Persian or Iranian history. The man acknowledged as founder of the Iranian Empire and whose passionate followers make Islam nervous to this day. That's Cyrus the Great, whose empire at its height was at that time the largest empire the world had ever seen. Incredibly, in 2016, on what's known as Cyrus Day, which falls on October 28th or 29th, depending on the year, reverence for this Persian king inspired such an outpouring of Iranians to his tomb in Pasargah that the authorities, nervous at this gathering, which wasn't really a spontaneous gathering at all, but rather one that had been inspired by social media, the authorities actually blocked roads and made subsequent Cyrus Day celebrations at Pasargad illegal. Today we're walking freely on this road and going straight to the tomb because it's neither October 28th or 29th. Look, what you're about to watch is dynamite. Cyrus the Great is dynamite. And what he's left us, mark my words, what he's left us is the equivalent of 10,000 sticks of dynamite. Born 1100 years before Prophet Muhammad, that's about 600 BC, Cyrus left the world something that will completely upend ISIS. I'm sure of it. We're going to get to it, but I'm not going to rush. Rather, I'm going to tell this story, which is, in a sense, his story, his God-ordained story, step by step. This video that you're watching, My Trip to Iran, lays the foundation for it all. So let's start. What did I find while in Iran? First, the ruins. From Persepolis to Shush, there were ruins dating back to Cyrus's empire that were striking. Next, there were also a lot of very friendly people. The real question though is, what did we find here that could possibly reverse the thinking of current ISIS fighters, challenge future ISIS recruiting, and provide a way of escape for the ocean of humanity housed in these prisoner of war camps? I'll tell you what we found. It's not quite Harrison Ford and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, for there were neither trapdoors nor cobras waiting for us. But we did have to climb quite a bit to get up close to some very special ancient ruins. There we found the tombs of three Persian kings who lived over 2,000 years ago and who are at the heart of one very specific prophecy. A prophecy recorded a thousand years before Prophet Muhammad was born. A prophecy built around Cyrus the Great that I doubt one in a million Iranians have ever heard. 
I believe this prophecy, when publicly deciphered, will not just open the roads to Pastor God again. I believe it will stop ISIS recruiting in its tracks and turn this world upside down. What you're about to watch lays the foundation for a powerful, no holds barred, line by line expose of this prophecy, which we're bringing to you in two episodes. But first, where did the notion of bringing this prophecy before the world come from? How did it start? What triggered it? We'll answer that in the next few minutes for sure. But before we do, I'd like you to cover the same ground I covered in Iran. Come with me to Pasargad and Shush. Come with me to Mashhad and Hamidan. Come and meet some of the same people I met while there. Beautiful people, friendly people. Come, let's go. We've got a lot of ground to cover before we climb through the minefields and cobwebs that have hidden this prophecy from the world for 2,500 years. I hope you're ready. 